Good morning. Welcome to Sulphur Christian Church. Good to see everybody here this morning and this cold, cold February day, but the sun's out. It's a pretty day for it to be so cold, but uh, just thankful to be here in this, this fine, fine Sunday morning. Um, no real announcements other than um, uh, I'll be having Wednesday night with Pastor Jeff on Wednesday night at 6 o'clock. Uh, we're going to, I think, get into the Word a little bit this Wednesday night and uh, study the Bible a little bit in the next couple of Wednesday nights. So, love for you to tune in to that. And, uh, of course, we're here in person on, on Sunday mornings at 11 o'clock. And, uh, Lord willing, there'll be uh, talk maybe about Sunday school here in a little bit as We'll, we'll kind of wait and see how things go. The, the numbers are improving, but we want to we wanna stay safe. We want to do, do what's uh, proper for the time. And uh, we'll, see, uh, we'll see how things go in the next few weeks, if maybe we can uh, uh, at least maybe have an adult Bible study or something and, uh, and maybe bring the kids in a little later than that even. We'll just have to see. Still praying about that, but... For now, Wednesday mornings, uh, Wednesday nights, and Sunday mornings at eleven, um, we're going to get right into it today. Um, uh, I'm going to have uh, Miss Barbara come up here in just a moment and uh, get us started. We're going to sing a couple of hymns, and then we'll have um, our prayer time and time of communion. So uh, I don't even let's see where's my hymnal at. <laughs> I usually have one up here. So I've picked a couple of beautiful hymns for us to sing today that we all know. Definitely how great they are at first. Barbara, how great they are at first. Uh, yeah. It's number two in your hymnal. Number two in your hymnal, how great thou art. If you're watching online, I'd love for you to sing along with us. Number two in your hymnal, how great thou art. I scarce can take it 
then sings my soul, my Savior God to thee. How great thou art, how great thou art, then sings my soul. The next uh, next hymn is there's something about that name. You may not even need your hymnal for that one. Number 71 in your hymnal. Folks sing along with this at home. several things already on our prayer list this morning. Uh, please keep Bruce and Ruth Joyner in your prayers. They are husband and wife, both in the hospital. Are they both on? I know he's on a ventilator. They're both on ventilators struggling with COVID. So please keep the Joyners and their whole family uh, having mom and dad in the hospital on respirators at the same time. Horrific, horrific. So keep the Joyner family in, in your prayers. Also keep Kip, Jennifer, and Scarlett in your prayers. Uh, Midge's uh, daughter, um, son-in-law, and granddaughter, uh, they are fine, but Scarlett was exposed to COVID at daycare, and so they're quarantined at home. And so please keep them in your prayers and keep George and Midge in your prayers because they like their baby. Yeah. They, they want to see their baby. So keep, uh, keep them uh, in your prayers as well. Also, hi, Larry, uh, Dave. I see you've joined in, Dave uh, Conger. Please keep uh, Dave and the Conger family, everybody, in your prayers. His brother passed away on Wednesday. Uh, please keep them in your prayers the conger family and dave and everybody and um uh what, what a difficult thing and also um, um children grandchildren everybody involved with that um 
as most of you, I'm sure all of you here know, uh, we've had Rose's aunt Anne with us at home and uh, she has steadily declined the last few days and she was still ticking when I left the house but Rose called me and sometime between leaving the house and uh, turning down at the end of the road down here uh, her aunt Anne passed over into glory today so uh, please be with Rose's family her brother and sister and, and uh, all of Anne's friends. Uh, she was a member of Watkins United Methodist Church in um, Louisville. And so just keep, keep her and all her, her friends in your prayers if you would. Um, but we, we were blessed to have Anne with us for the last almost month and it was, it was good. And I encourage anybody who watches this the Bible says to take care of orphans and widows, and let me tell you, he will bless you beyond measure when you follow that. Family should take care of family, if you can. Uh, you know, this is not a guilt trip. You know, Anne was in a physical condition Rose and I could handle uh, at home. And so, but I do encourage you uh, to be there for, for family, kids, grandkids, when opportunities arise that you can take care of someone and they can be home uh, with you um, before they pass over to glory, uh, I highly recommend it. Is it easy? No. Is it hard? Yes. But it is a huge blessing. So I just wanted to say that uh, because I know a lot of people become faced with that at one point or another in their lives. Also, please keep the Ronald Neal family in your prayers. He was the deputy jailer in uh, Campbell County jails here in Kentucky. He was only in his 40s, passed away from com uh, complications due to COVID. So keep his, obviously if he's only in his 40s, there's a lot, lot of people uh, impacted by that. So please keep uh, the Ronald Neal family in your prayers. Also, uh, uh, our um, daughter's father and uh, mother-in-law, Sharon and Nick Hetty, both have COVID right now. He has symptoms she does not, but same thing. Can't see grandbabies and, and having to quarantine. He owns a business, all those kind of things. So please keep them uh, in your prayers as well. Anything else before we go to the Lord in prayer? So we'll go to prayer time here in just one moment, and then um, and then if you have your communion elements handy, uh, I will pray for communion as well at the end of our prayer time. Any other anything else for for the prayer list? Did you put the Tyndall family on? Y'all, I forgot that the Tyndall family. T e n d. T i n d a l l. D a l l. Okay. Mrs. Her mother died. Her mother passed away. So keep the Tyndall family, T-I-N-D-A-L-L -L family. They lost their mother. So please keep them in your prayers as well. Ernie not feeling great today. So uh, keep, uh, keep him and Barbara in your prayers as well. Paula. I just have a praise. Oh, we'll um, take a praise. I know we were we were talking about this before church started. Uh, the kids made cards for several people last week, and Pastor Jeff was telling me how much joy that brought them. So yes, kids, uh, you need to know those cards you made. Our kids made cards last week for Dave Conger's brother and for Aunt Anne at our house and some others and. You guys did something so good. So you made so many people happy when they saw your cards. I just want you guys to know you've done such a good thing. So thank, thank you, kids, for for making those cards and loving on people that way. That mean that means a lot to people. It really does. All right, great praise, Jordan. Another praise for Ellen Thomas. His scheme came back. Yes. 
Yeah, Owen Combs, we've been praying for for a long time. Uh, received a great, great update this week of no disease in his body. They're going to take the port out. Uh, praise the Lord. We've been praying for, for Owen for a long time, and we've seen prayer answered. So praise the Lord. So good. God's good. He sure is. Let's go to the Lord in prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, Lord Jesus, we love you. My goodness, we love you so much, Lord, because you're there with us through everything. You're there through the good times and you're, you're laughing with us and clapping your hands and praising with us. And, and when we're hurt, you're crying with us and you put your arm around us and you're, you're with us through all that we go through. And we're so thankful, Father God. Lord Jesus, we pray for all these people we've mentioned this morning, uh, Dave Conger's family, his brother Larry's family, who are so impacted by the whole family by COVID, Lord Jesus, and and complications from that. Lord Jesus, we be we pray for the Neal family. We pray for the Joiner family, Father God. Lord, we pray for Ann Valentine's friends and families, Lord Jesus, as she has passed over into glory with you, Father God. Lord, we pray that uh, Kip and Jennifer and Scarlett will be fine, that they'll come through this and, and be ready to go here in a few days. And Lord Jesus, we're trusting, trusting for that. Be with the Tyndall family as they grieve the loss of their mother, Lord Jesus. Lord, be with Nick and Sharon Hetty as, as they go through their deal with COVID. And Lord, help them and be with them. Lord, there's so many uh, more that we could go into. But Lord Jesus, you know their names and you know their afflictions. You know what's going on. Lord Jesus, and we lift them up to you as well. Father God, Lord Jesus, we lift up this congregation to you, this ministry, this church, this body that you bless us with, Father God. Lord Jesus, lead us and guide us as we move into the future, Lord and that we would be in your will, that we would do what you want us to do, that we would reach the people that we need to reach, that we would impact our community, our county, our state, our nation, and our world for you, Lord Jesus, and all the things that we do, that everything we touch would have your fingerprint on it before it would ever have ours. Lord Jesus, we love you and we praise you. You're so good. Father God, we thank you for your sacrifice that you went to the cross willingly, that you chose the nails so that we could have the freedoms that we have today, Lord Jesus, that we could have redemption, your grace, your comfort, your love, your forgiveness, Lord. And we're so thankful for that. Let us never, ever, ever take for granted what you've done for us, Lord. We praise you and thank you. We lift you up. You are so great. How great thou art are truly. And Lord Jesus, help us to not stumble ever upon your name, your great, great, great name, the name of Jesus. It has power. Lord Jesus, uh, let us not be afraid to use it. So Lord Jesus, as we take our communion, as we drink from the cup and, and we eat our, our little bite, Lord Jesus, that reminds us of the blood you shed and the body that, that was broken for us, for forgiveness of our sins and for uh, everyone to have the same opportunity for redemption. Lord Jesus, we thank you and praise you. In your holy, mighty, amazing, and wonderful name we pray. Amen.
beautiful piece, Miss Barbara. Wonderful. So um, before we go on, those of you who watch on Wednesday nights, and remember a couple of weeks ago I had Mike Berry from Southeast Christian Church on there, and I said, make sure that you uh, put on there, I want that book. Here's your book that you asked for. So make sure you check in with me after church to come get your copy of the book, uh, The Art of Neighboring. And if you haven't caught that at home, you need to go back and watch that on my Facebook page, The Art of Neighboring, uh, with myself and Mike Bear. And I have, uh, I have several copies. So if you didn't put on there, I want that book, I do have several more copies other than what I already have promised out. So, so if you're interested in a copy of that, and it's a great, easy read that you can pass on to somebody else after you finish reading it. So just keep that in mind. So last week, last Sunday, we began a new series called Becoming. And, you know, we talked last week, and we'll talk a little bit more today, that, that when you accept Jesus as your Lord and Savior, it doesn't just stop there. It, it, there's, more, there's more to it. In fact, the Bible is pretty explicit that we are to continue in our journey. Our journey of faith is, is being transformed into someone who looks sounds and loves more and more like Jesus all the time. So our series verse, I'm going to start with this, our series verse is Romans 12, 2. Do not be conformed to the pattern of this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Then you will be able to test and approve what God's will is, his good, pleasing, and perfect will. So we are always in transformation. You know, we're the caterpillars, and over time, we're becoming God's butterflies. We, we are in metamorphosis all the time. Constantly, we should be moving forward in our knowledge. And last week, we talked about wisdom. Today, we're going to talk about becoming strong. So, my, my uh, scripture for today is Psalm 46. 46 verse 1 Psalm 46 verse 1 God is our refuge and strength and ever present help in trouble Listen to that again God is our refuge and strength and ever present help in trouble. So yes, we are to become strong, but we need to make sure where our strength comes from, right? We need to make sure that we are not relying solely on our own strength. So we'll talk about that in just a minute. So we began this series becoming and we started by talking about becoming wise and we learned last week that wisdom is comprehensive wisdom is something that's collected wisdom is something that is gathered and then that gathered collected knowledge that we get we take it and we take that knowledge and we put it into practice and last week I used the analogy of when you were a kid, did you ever accidentally burn yourself on the stovetop? Well, did you ever do that again on purpose? No. You didn't do that again. You, wisdom is learning and applying that knowledge as, as things come back up again and you go, I remember that didn't work out too well for me the last time. I'm not going to do that again. That's wisdom. Wisdom is collecting gathering knowledge, and then using it practically in your life. Also, we learned that a life of following Jesus is a journey. It's, it's progressive. You know, it's one thing. We can honestly, for goodness sakes, we can say, I'm saved by the Lord Jesus Christ. I'm good. And there's truth in that. We are saved by grace. 
However, we're called to more. The Great Commission alone gives us a giant clue that the Christian life doesn't begin and end with, yes, Lord, I'll follow you. That's the beginning of the journey. We should never stop, ever stop learning to be more like Jesus. Never. We should never stop being more like Jesus. Today we're going to discuss strength. We're going to discuss becoming strong. A moment ago we read in Psalm 46.1 that says, God is our refuge and strength and ever-present help in trouble. So when we talk about becoming strong, we need to make sure that we recognize that that strength comes from God and that he is our refuge in times of trouble. See, wisdom is not always running into the battle. Sometimes wisdom is running back to God, to his refuge, and let him battle for you and with you. That's wisdom. And it's becoming stronger. Relying on God more, not less, is both wisdom and strength. Now, we can become strong by beginning to lean upon the power God puts within us. So, do you find you are stronger? Do you find you have more strength when you do physically demanding things regularly? You know, I know most, most of us have at some point done the workout thing, right? We, we've done cardio or we've lifted weights or we've gotten on the treadmill or the elliptical or, you know, we've done these things. That, you know, some people running and, you know, it, you feel stronger, don't you? When you're working out, when you're doing physical things, you know, I do a lot of lifting at work and, 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 and when I'm in school, when I'm working at school, I feel stronger during the school year than maybe I do in the summer when I'm not doing all that lifting and walking and on my feet eight hours a day. I feel stronger, don't you? When you are exercising regularly, when you're doing physical activity regularly, you feel stronger. You know, I do a lot of physical activity at work, and some of you do too. But when I come back after summer break, those boxes feel heavier. You don't, I don't have the same amount of strength. I have to build that endurance and that strength back up. Things become heavier. They become more difficult to lift. To live. And yes, it is important for us to remain physically active for our bodies to stay strong. We need to do that. We need to go for walks. We need to do things. We need to stay active. We need to get up off the couch and do things. It's good. It, you feel better. You feel better. One thing is true. The more you rest, the more you want to rest. Isn't that true? It's the truth. It, it can become a habit where all I want to do is rest, right? But listen to this. If it's that important for us to stay physically active, for us to stay strong, does it make sense that we should exercise our faith and spirit in order to be spiritually healthy and spiritually strong and for it to function at a high level? Our spirit, our faith should be operating at a high level and that means exercising it. The truth is we can become mentally and spiritually weak. If we don't keep active in our prayer life, if we don't pray, if we don't fellowship with our fellow brothers and sisters, if we don't come to worship, if we don't worship together, if we don't, if we don't do those things, if we don't do our devotions, we can become mentally and spiritually weak. And let me tell you the truth, we do. We will become spiritually weak if we don't exercise our faith. Now, Scripture can serve as a great reminder that with just a little bit of faith, strength can always be found, even when we feel weak or exhausted. 
Nehemiah 8 verse 10 tells us, do not grieve for the joy of the Lord is your strength. How do you think Paul and Silas felt while they were in chains, sitting in prison, waiting to find out if they were going to live or die. What if they would just have given up? What if they, their spirit would have been broken and they, they would have just said, God's not helping us. I give up. But they didn't. Just like this verse from Nehemiah, they took the joy of the Lord and it became their strength and even, even the guards were, were saved. So don't, listen to me, this is important and I know, some, I know some people need to hear this. I know some people out there need to hear this. I know some people in this room need to hear this. This is important. Even when we feel weak or exhausted, don't get frustrated. Don't get frustrated when you're weary and you're struggling. It happens to all of us. Don't get frustrated when, when things are tough. We all go through tough times. Sometimes, listen to this, sometimes our greatest strength comes from when we just stop and praise God. Sometimes in those moments, those moments, weary and I mean weary when you don't think you can lift your head and your arms are limp beside of you and your struggle is so seems so overwhelming and you seem so tired you feel so tired so overwhelmed sometimes our greatest strength can come from just praising God having gratitude and just to take hold of the joy of the Lord you know, sometimes, sometimes just break out in, in the chorus from how great thou art. Sing, there's something about that name. If you don't remember all the words, make them up to fit your situation. Praise God. Let the joy of the Lord overtake you in those times when you don't feel strong. He is when you don't feel strong, he is. Listen to this. I love this. This is from Isaiah 41, verse 10. So do not fear, for I am with you. Do not be dismayed, for I am your God. I will strengthen you and help you. I will uphold you with my righteous right hand. We need to remember that. We need to think about that when we're feeling puny and weak and overwhelmed. That's the kind of thing we need to, need to repeat over and over in our heads. You know, every, everybody's had that moment when you've cried out to God, I can't do this, God. I can't do this. But sometimes we're so wrapped up in our sorrow. We're so wrapped up in our being overwhelmed and our hurt that we don't hear him say in that still, gentle, quiet voice, I know you can't, dear, but I can. I will strengthen you and I will help you, he says to us. It is so important for us to trust him with our lives, especially when we don't feel strong. As we learn to trust him more and more, our strength will grow, perhaps not quickly, but it will grow. To be our best, to make sure that our faith and our spiritual life are as strong as possible, we need to make sure that when those victories come, and they will come, Victories do come. They will come. When you lean on God, victories happen. Everybody in this room can attest to that, I bet. Amen. But when those victories come, we need to be, make sure that we praise God 
for the big victories like beating cancer. Praise God for bringing me through this. Thank you, God. I know your hand was in it. And the small victories. Hey, it's, it's not even the middle of February. How are those New Year's resolutions going? But we need to pray God, praise God for the small victories too, like passing on dessert. We need to praise God. Hey, you know, I didn't, I didn't eat the best I could eat today, but I said no to the butterscotch pie. Big victories, small victories. They're still victories. We need to praise God for it. Listen to this. Exodus 15, 2 says, The Lord is my strength and my song. He has given me victory. This is my God and I will praise him. My Father God, I will exalt him. So you, uh, you want to know what praise for victory sounds like? You want to know? You want to know what that sounds like? This is what praising God for victory sounds like. Exodus 15, 2. The Lord is my strength and my song. He has given me victory. This is my God and I will praise him. My Father God, I will exalt him. That's what victory sounds like. Amen? Amen. In the song, On the Solid Rock I Stand, I love that song. You love that song? On Christ the Solid Rock I Stand, All other ground is sinking sand. All other ground is sinking sand. There's no strength in sinking sand. There's no strength there. But there's an amazing strength on the rock. If you want to obtain more strength, go to the source of strength. If you want to get stronger, go to where strength comes from. Doesn't that make sense? God is the source of strength. You know, we can lift weights, we can work out, we can train, we can exercise, we can eat right and do all the things to get our bodies into top shape. But what if we're lazy in our walk with Jesus? What if we slack on our spiritual life? What, what good is it? What good is it to have a perfect body if your spirit is not in shape? What if our walk with the Lord becomes our couch and potato chips with the Lord? Our spirit, our spirit needs spiritual nourishment and exercise. Our spirits need nourishment and exercise. We can feed our spirits with prayer and worship and fellowship and study. We are designed, listen to this, we are designed to seek and find. The Bible says, seek me and find me. That should never stop. That's just not talking about salvation. Yes, we should seek him. Yes, we should find him for our salvation. But it does not end there. We should be constantly seeking him. And if we do, we'll, we'll constantly find him. You want to become stronger? Seek him and find him. Do you know Philippians 4.13? Anybody know that one? Philippians 4.13, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. I can do all. What? All? I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Again, it tells us right there, right there, we need him to be able to do all things. We can't do it all without him. You will know, listen to this, you will know that you're becoming strong when you know that you have to have him to do all things. That's when you'll know you're becoming strong. Until then, we need to keep exercising our faith. We need to keep feeding our spirit. Becoming strong in the Lord has an amazing benefit. 
becoming strong in the Lord comes with an amazing benefit. Listen to this. Psalm 29, 11 tells us, The Lord gives strength to his people. The Lord blesses his people with peace. Beautiful benefit of being strong in the Lord is to be able to be chill when the storms are raging. When the worst of the worst can be thrown at you, life can just be raging around you, and you go, me and Jesus, we're good. He's got, he's got me. I have peace. Peace is strength. Strength is peace. Peace is a benefit that comes with strength that God gives. And I know we can all agree we definitely need some more peace in this world, don't we? Individually and collectively. So now that we've talked about becoming wise, becoming wise, what did we say? That's when we collect knowledge and use it practically. That's when we begin to, we know right from wrong, but we begin to choose right more and more and more and more. That's wisdom. That's becoming wise. You can have all kinds of knowledge and never become wise. You can tell people they need to stop using drugs so that they don't go out and rob people's houses and do all kinds of nasty things. They, they have that knowledge in their head, but they've not gained the wisdom to go through with it yet. So you can have knowledge and not have wisdom. But if you have wisdom, you've gained a lot of knowledge to get there. In becoming strong, becoming wise, and becoming strong. Becoming strong, see the upside down ways of Jesus. Kyle Eidelman preached a, a sermon series years and years ago called The Upside Down Ways of Jesus. And he said, victory for Christians comes through surrender. Surrender. It's completely backwards from what we're told all our lives. It's fight, 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 fight. And Jesus is saying, surrender, surrender, surrender to me. Let me take the wheel. So next week, I, I hope this goes good because I'm really, I'll be honest with you, I'm really nervous about this one. Next week, we're going to talk about becoming real. We've talked about becoming wise. We've talked about becoming strong. Next Sunday morning, we're going to talk about becoming real, which maybe, perhaps, along with being wiser and being stronger believers, next week we're going to talk about becoming real, transparent, honest-to-goodness followers of Christ, and it's hard, and it's uncomfortable, and it's not easy to talk about. It's not easy for me to talk about. But it's what the world needs. It needs us to be real. We'll talk about that next week. And uh, believe me, I'm going to be a nervous wreck all week studying about it and thinking about it. But I know God will bring it. He'll bring it. He always does. God needs us to be become real, honest, transparent, loving reflections of him, not just caricatures. So we'll talk about that next week. So let's go to the Lord in prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, Lord God, we want to become what you need us to be, what you mean us to be, what you want us to be, Father God. And so we are in the act of becoming becoming wiser, becoming stronger. And Lord Jesus, hopefully, with your help, we're becoming more real. Father God, I pray for all the people who have lost loved ones this week. It has been a tough week for people losing family members. Lord Jesus, we just lift everybody up. Lord Jesus, Father God, thank you for for this message, 
I needed it so much. The last two weeks you spoke to me so much, and I know other people have said that too. You've spoken to them. So Father God, help us to become the kind of people that you need us and want us to be. Thank you, Father God, so much for everything. Thank you for this church, this ministry, these people, this body, and how amazing it is. Father God, continue to help us to reach out and impact the world around us. Lord Jesus, help us to become even better neighbors. Help us to practice the art of good neighboring, Lord Jesus. Father God, not just to think about it or read about it, but actually do it. And that is one of the ways we can become more real. Thank you, Father God. Keep us all safe. Protect us all. Help us all. In your precious and holy name we pray. Amen. Amen. God bless. And I'll see you real soon.